This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. Also brought to you by DoorDash. The app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Why, is it not December? I should change my attire as of late not. Ah, <laughs> now that's a lot more festive. God, I'm sick of this joke. All right, just play the thing. The, play the thing. PLAY THE THING! <laughs> been many Christmas horror films over the years. Some have stood the test of time, many have fallen by the wayside, some weren't even meant to be horror. Krampus came at just the right time with just the right idea and just the right tone. Uh, for the most part, we'll get to that in a bit. Premiering in 2015, the last holiday horror film to be released around Christmas was almost 10 years earlier. And to be fair, most of the ones prior were made on smaller budgets because there wasn't a guaranteed audience. This one not only looked like it had money behind it, but also a wicked sense of humor about the miseries of the holiday. Based on a character that had existed for years, but was only then growing awareness from obscure reference to household name. This is arguably what made Krampus the well-known icon he is today. At least in America. Despite being another PG-13 movie that pretends to be an R, the mean-spirited atmosphere and creepy imagery has left several people I know swearing they saw an R-rated movie. I don't know, I respect a film that's clearly forced to be PG-13 yet tries everything to be as close to an R as possible. Despite, like I said earlier, some audiences being split on it, why is it still growing in popularity every year and more and more people adding it to the Christmas special libraries? Well, let's make visions of severed thumbs dance in your head. This is Krampus. The credits roll with what I wish was an exaggeration of Black Friday sales while playing it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Look at that title over this image. That tells you everything you're about to see. This so hilariously sums up commercialism assassinating the meaning of Christmas. I want to see these films say, Oh, they did in a few minutes what we couldn't in an hour and a half. Where are those Twilight vs. Up memes? Oh well, kiss that dog's ass, you'll still watch us. I write an apology to the rest of your class for ruining the recital. One of the scuffles comes from a boy named Max, played by MJ Anthony, who fought a kid who was mocking his love of Christmas. He even told the first graders that Santa was just a cheap marketing ploy and then he to sell Pepsi. Coke. You know what I mean? As if Pepsi needed any help with their mascot. His mom and dad, played by Tony Collette and Adam Scott, are too busy preparing for their annoying relatives to drop by, so his grandma is the only one who gives him any attention. Do you still really believe in Santa? Aber ich glaub auch an Nachtisch vor dem Abendessen. Grandma, how come we can understand each other even though we never speak each other's languages? An den Warngeist von Weihnachten zu glauben. An den Geist des Gebens und des Opferns. The rest of the family arrives, including David Kitchener, playing a redneck obsessed with guns, and Conchata Farrell, playing a difficult gossip. I too was shocked they departed from the norm. So, would you ask Santa for this year? Not to be confused with that kid from Bad Santa. Lord Almighty, looks like Martha Stewart threw up in here. This family is so miserable, they make the McAllisters look like the Tanners. She makes so much food that you can't pronounce. You guys might like a break from macaroni and cheese with hot dogs. And who doesn't make a ham at Christmas? What are you now, a Jew? Of course not. Then the film will be called Krampus. What I like about the family is nobody is 100% perfect. Everybody, and I mean everybody, has a difficult side that'll later serve them in a troubling situation. So what kind of godforsaken concoction are you whipping up now? Well, how about we go to your trailer for Christmas next year, hmm? For your sake, just stay the hell out of my kitchen. Now that's a Hallmark movie title I would watch. 
It doesn't help that Max's cousins steal his letter to Santa and appropriately bond over his innocent cry for help. Yeah, that's Christmas Prince shit. They mock the fuck out of him. You might have noticed that I don't have tons of friends. Oh no, really, Max? I wish my mom and dad could fall in love again. <laughs> God, this is a terrible Christmas, but it's a rockin' Festivus. And that. Screw you, dad does not wish we were boys. You mean you're not. I gotta change some jokes here. <laughs> Stop making those glass sound effects. You know we didn't shoot any actually breaking. I just wanted Christmas to be like it used to be, but forget it. I hate Christmas. I hate all of you. Nothing's been the same since Lego started celebrating Life Day. I like that even the heartfelt talk isn't exactly a 100% feel-good speech either. People you try to be friends with, even though you don't have a whole lot in common. But why? Okay, you kind of got me there. Don't worry, in six years' time, everyone will become more united. I love the note he leaves on. It's not the most comforting, but it's the most honest. Maybe it makes us work a little harder to find what we do have in common. Do you really believe in all that? I want to, Max. And I'm sure that's enough to rekindle the Christmas spirit. God, this movie's harsh! Like a Pazuzu Mary Poppins, the note is whisked away to bring a child's worst nightmares to life. Starting with a snowstorm, keeping the family around longer. Huh, Stephen Gamble took up snow sculpting. They get some very odd deliveries at a very odd time. And I can rich people get all the free shit. It says it's from a Mr. Of All Evil. From the flaming fires of, oh, I can't read it, somewhere French. The sister says she's unable to call her boyfriend a few blocks down, so she asks if she can walk in the certain death blizzard to his house. You're asking this family, of course you can go. She'll be fine. Okay, one hour. If you're not back by then, um, we're opening your gifts. <laughs> Just kidding, we didn't get you shit. The sky goes dark and we hear the sound of sleigh bells, um, S-L-A-Y, as a large creature is seen on the rooftops. <laughs> Tell Amazon I've had worse jobs, but not many. I think I saw this in a movie once. I'm sure the person turned out okay. Don't worry, the family will forget she even left. One of the things I like about this film is you really get a sense of the cold from the blizzard. Whenever they look outside, I can feel the frost off the window. It's that convincing. Though maybe that's the cold of their wavering interest in their daughter. Beth should be home by now. She's fine, she's at Derek's. It's already dark out and Beth isn't back yet. Hey, Howard, do you think your Hummer could get through this mess? We're going back and forth between being redeemable and human garbage. We were wondering if you could help out. Storm probably knocked out the radio stations, too. What I wouldn't give for a little Bing Crosby right about now. Uh, that was your cue to start singing? Back at home, there arose such a clatter, like eight incubi looking for guts to splatter. Probably just squirrels. <laughs> Sounds dangerous. Max, check it out. See? Squirrels. Unless that squirrel looks like this, that seems very unlikely. Probably playing with their nuts. Okay, now I'm wishing it was her and she brought better jokes. Meanwhile, the father and uncle make it to the boyfriend's house, but fine, it's been broken into. Looks like a gas line blew. That or Krampus. <laughs> the uncle gets caught in a trap, and again, for a PG-13, tell me if these don't sound like some gooey R-rated sound effects. <laughs> That sounds like eight nutsacks filled with bones that are being munched on by eight sets of teeth that also somehow have bones. It really feels like they're working with what they can. The father shoots the monster and they make their way back home. Aunt Dorothy, will you keep an eye on them? I never like kids. All right. Come on, guys, I'm gonna teach you how to make peppermint schnapps. She's like if Walmart was a person. As soon as everyone falls asleep, those exploding squirrels they completely forgot about come down the chimney and tempt the fat kid, because fat. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Rodal puts kids on a diet. <laughs> well, the bad news is I lost our son. The good news is I found the Behringer kid's father. This is our shoot. Grandma finally puts together what's going on and tells them the story about the Krampus. Please. Listen. English. I knew it. Hey, it's America. Learn a different language. 
She talks about when she was in her homeland of Puffs commercials, her village ran out of hope and therefore Christmas spirit. She wished nothing but misery for her family, thus Krampus came to make it all come true. He left me as a reminder of what happens when hope is lost and the Christmas spirit dies. I also wish to be a dentist, but we didn't have the animation budget for that. You believe this senile horse shit? <sighs> She'll be yammering about her rabbit Easter bunny come spring. Howard, that's enough. Don't ruin the sequel! In a world where people say in a world a lot. Wait, do they still do that? It's more of a 90s thing. In a world where people should say in a world more. Hello Fresh is there. Get mouth-watering seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. Explosions! That sells. Hello Fresh makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. No matter what's going on in the world, everyone's gotta eat. That's why Hello Fresh is here to make eating better, easier. No grocery stores, no stress. Stressful meal planning, just everything you need to prepare wholesome, delicious meals all delivered to your door. Hot cars are hot. Explosions. Hello Fresh's recipes are delicious. There's something for everyone, including low calorie, vegetarian, and kid friendly recipes every week. Save time and stress effortlessly. You can save up to 28% by using Hello Fresh versus grocery store shopping. Look at this cool. Cool thing here, that's cool. You now connect that to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is also committed to giving back. HelloFresh donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019, and this year is stepping up their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. That's nice! I particularly enjoy HelloFresh. Me, the narrator! Sorry, I don't usually get that personal, but we're talking about HelloFresh! I'm a guy who usually can't cook, but with HelloFresh, cooking is made fun and easy in a world where you can get a special deal. Here's a special deal! Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code CRITIC90 to get $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. That's HelloFresh.com and use the code CRITIC90 to get $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. Coming to theaters this summer, I mean winter, and probably streaming too. Go to HelloFresh.com and do that deal thing I just said, right now! Or in a bit, when, when you have time! time. You may have enjoyed sponsorship. Well, now enjoy sponsorship too. DoorDash. A lot of times it's great to cook your own meals, but sometimes you just don't have time. Time? That's why there's DoorDash. In a world where I used a lot of the cool footage I had, DoorDash says here's some random stuff. With explosions. Continue supporting restaurants in your community safely. You've counted on restaurants, now they're counting on you. And while dining rooms may be closed, they're still open for delivery on DoorDash. Look at this stuff. DoorDash. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new contactless delivery drop-off setting. Here is food with explosions. You've seen that, but here's explosions on the explosions. What? With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left right at your door. DoorDash deliveries are now contactless to keep communities we operate in safe with explosions. Explosions on explosions! And a kitty! Cute. And right now, there's a special offer. Our viewers can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA. That's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA. And because this is the sequel, people usually do the same thing in the sequel. We're just gonna say it again. Don't forget, that's code NOSTALGIA for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. Coming soon to your doorstep near you. Or actually, at you at your doorstep. DoorDash, cat cute! Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. So the uncle decides to go out and face the evil, but apparently that Calvin kid's been dropping by to make more snowmen in their front yard. Don't open the door. Listen to me, I'm Tony Collette. I piss horror films! The family tries to figure out what to do, asking Grandma if there's any way to escape. 
Es geht nicht um das, was du tust. It's not what you do. It's what you believe. Sorry, I used all my English on that story. I'm not even wasting subtitles on you. It's kind of niemand. It's just... <laughs> What's she saying? She says we're fucked. <laughs> now don't say that again or else we can't allow kids into the theater. A toast to never making sense! How do you... Because I'm old enough to know when life is coming at you with his pants down. Well, at least now the girls know how they were conceived. Speaking of which, the girls swear they hear Max's sister upstairs in the attic. Beth, you up there? Is that your crinkly radio voice we're used to? Meanwhile, in the kitchen, other things are going bump in the night. I need to know which Joe Dante movie we're ripping off now. The Howling or Gremlins? <laughs> oh shit, toy soldiers! Ah! <laughs> I'll admit I don't usually like CG monsters in horror films, but these gingerbread men have such playful, wanton destruction. It's kind of hard not to laugh along with them. Upstairs, the girls are in the process of being eaten alive by a giant jack-in-the-box. Again, the sound design gives the impression this scene is much grosser than it really is. <laughs> in Soviet Russia, jack-in-the-box eats you! Oh, and don't forget the Christmas angel! Chucky, Birdman, whatever, die! <laughs> Aw, people did buy a little shit. <laughs> hey, if it's not red, it's not gory. Osmosis Jones rules. Man, they're doing all the cheats. They find one of the sisters is okay, but elves break in, ready to finish the job. See you in hell! <laughs> okay, no see you in hell should be followed by a wee sound effect. Maybe in Terrifier, but that's a big maybe. They make a break for it, but Grandma stays behind to face Krampus alone. She wants to face him! Hey, baby. For like, uh, how much or something? So confront Krampus apparently means go out like a bitch, resulting in him quickly catching up to the rest of the family. You will show me that wrong turn at all, McCoy team! You have to go. I need you to go. No. All of you! You know, this monster really helped us grow as a family. Maybe next year we should take our kids to see Leatherface instead of Santa. Slowly but surely, everyone gets tremored to death, leaving Max as the last survivor. Help! Hey, hey, there's no need for that language, fuckface. I take back my wish! I was kind of thinking this would end like Home Alone with everybody walking through the door and everybody learns a lesson and you know I think I'll keep my wish and recommend you to all my friends. Hail Krampus! Take me instead. Aw, oh, the tears of true love. Fucking hilarious. Bye! Please. I'm sorry. Okay, not that I see many Krampuses in movies, but that design has to be in the top three. He looks like he's permanently singing the last note of a Metallica song. He tosses him into Mount Doom, only to discover he's back at home and everything seems to be fine. Oh, hey, there he is. Hey, kiddo, we thought the sugar plum fairies may have gotten you. Had a bad dream, I guess. A family Christmas where no one's complaining about politics? This has to be phony. Sure enough it is, as it seems like they're trapped in a snow globe along with everyone else who once lost the Christmas spirit. <laughs> now of course, this raises a bunch of questions. Are they really trapped in snow globes? Is this just how Krampus keeps an eye on families? Is their entire world in that snow globe, or does it just look like there's an entire world outside? Can they leave the house? Are they trapped there forever? But all of you are forgetting the number one question. Did the delivery guy get a snow globe? Oh, he did. He's just still frozen in it. Okay, I'm fine never getting answers to the rest. Krampus, for me at least, is one of those strange movies I noticed the flaws while watching, being uneven, boring at times, and not going all the way with the humor, gore, or tone, but for some reason I still have fond memories of. 
that might be why people are so split on it. A lot of the criticisms against it are correct. It is trying to be a few too many things. Mean-spirited, heartwarming, comedic, dramatic, gruesome, safe, satire, legit horror. Had it been allowed to go all the way with an R rating, I think people would have overlooked that and had fun with the creativity of the kills. It's not like this director hasn't done something like that before. But it's kinda like Tusk. Despite its problems, it's hard for me not to remember it in a fond light. I like that it combines practical effects with CG. I like the creativity of the creatures. I like the nods to so many things we associate with Christmas, both the good and the bad. Just like Trick or Treat, it surrounds itself in so many things associated with the holiday while also throwing in a bunch of monsters and satire. Maybe I see it as the horror version of those Christmas rom-coms. We know they're not great, but there's something fun about seeing how ridiculous they can get while also serenading in holiday porn. Do I wish it could have gone further in a lot of avenues? Sure, but you can tell they were trying their all to work within the PG-13 limitations. Unlike other films that should have been R, but were too comfortable being a PG-13, to a point where it practically felt like a PG. I understand why it's a mixed bag for some, but there's just enough in it for me to enjoy. And seeing how its popularity seems to be growing every year, I guess I'm not alone. What do you think? Was this the right amount of cheesy horror to keep you in the Christmas spirit? Or do you need some other Christmas spirits to get through it? Let me know in the comments, as this Christmas season is just beginning. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember- It does breathe more. Some people in Chicago might really like this. Probably playing with their nuts. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Once again, this one is, uh, uh, was requested. Uh, so thank you so much. Again, thank you so much all the people that have uh, been requesting uh, different charities and such. Uh, this one is called The Dig. This is about uh, feeding children and, and, and adults as well in uh, Guatemala. Uh, malnutrition in Guatemala is a severe problem. It not only inhibits the development of each child, but also the development of the nation as a whole. Uh, it is the goal of The Dig to address these issues directly through the center of hope. They provide therapies and rehabilitation opportunities for children with special needs, malnourished children and their families, educational programs on health, nutrition, and agriculture. By providing access to educational and therapy programs, this will aid the people to learn not only what to do, but how to do it. So this is obviously a really good organization. We were doing some research on them, and they seem to be doing uh, just really, really good work down there. So if you can donate, that'd be fantastic. If not, as always, just spread the word, uh, you know, and make more and more people aware of the good that people are doing around the world. And, uh, you know, I, I think we all need <laughs> reminders of that all the time. So, uh, yeah, just keep spreading the word and uh, or, or donate. Obviously, that'd be a great help, too. So uh, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Take care.